So a while back, we built a calculator that adds two numbers together that the user inputs. Now we're going to build a better calculator. So this one's going to be able to take two numbers that the user inputs, and they're also going to be able to enter if they want to add, subtract, multiply, or divide those numbers. Um, and based on what they input, uh, we're going to handle that and to return a result. And we can handle that using if statements. So let's get started. And first thing we want to do is go ahead and clear everything out of here. And we're just going to keep our main equals do. Save that. <clears throat> so the first step of building this better calculator is to get user input. So we want to get a first number, an operator, and a second number. So let's do that. Underneath main equals do, we're going to say put string ln. And if you remember from before, we said something like enter first number okay and then we need to get that input from the user so we can say first and remember the number comes in as a string not a number everything the user inputs comes in as a string so we're going to say first string equals and that's going to be equal to get line and get line is one of those built-in functions and it reaches out to the user allows them to input something and then when they input it, it stores it in first string. Also, it's not equals here. That's my fault, it's this arrow. So it takes this, whatever the user enters, and it stores it in first string. And you need this arrow, not equals. If you use equals, it won't work. Underneath that, then we wanna get the operator. So put string ln, enter an operator. And then we can say operator, and we wanna get line. So we're now getting the operator from the user and we're putting it in this operator variable. And lastly, we need to enter a second number from the user, enter second number. And we're gonna say second string get line. So now we're getting the second number and storing it in second string. So now that we have our numbers and operator from the user, we need to convert the numbers to actual numbers, right? They're strings right now. And we need to convert them to numbers. So let's do that. So we can say let first number equal, and there's a built-in function called read in Haskell. So we can say read, and we need to pass it the thing that we want to turn into a number. In this case, it's first string. And then we need to say what type of number that we want. Do we want a integer or a float or a double? In this case, we don't know if they're passing in a decimal or a like an integer. So we don't know if it's a decimal or an integer. So we're gonna just assume it's a decimal and that'll cover all our ground. So we can pat say it's going to be a double. So we're gonna read the first string as a double. So this turns it into a double and it assigns it to this first number variable. Now we're gonna do the same thing for second string. We're gonna call it second number, equal read second, num second string as a double. So again, we're taking the second string, we're gonna read it, feed this in to read, and we know it's gonna turn it from a string to a double, and then we're gonna assign it to second number. Now that we have our two numbers and our operator, we can write our if then else statement to account for all of the different operators they could enter. So underneath let second number there, we're gonna say if, maybe we'll add a space there, if operator double equals plus then, well, then we want to print and we have to use print because we're dealing with numbers here. We want to print the result of a math equation that's going to be in some type of number. So then print, and we're going to use a parentheses because we're going to do the math inside of those. So we want to print the first number plus the second number. So we add the first number and the second number. If it were like three and five, we would get eight. And then we print that eight to the console but there's three other operators they could enter, right? So, excuse me, else if operator double equals minus then print first number minus second number. 
Okay, and before we continue, right, you could see, probably see the pattern here. So if you want to finish the pattern before I do, great. If not, follow me. Else if operator double equals, in this case, the asterisk, which is multiplication, then print first number times second number. And the last one would be else if, and we're using an else if here because we're gonna have a default statement or a final else statement after this, and I'll show you in just a second. So else if operator double equals uh, the, the forward slash for division, then print first number divided by second number. Okay, so we've covered addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, what if they don't enter one of those four things? What if they enter a word like cat or dog? Well, in that case, we want to say, hey, that's not valid. We can't do eight dog three. Uh, that doesn't give us anything. Eight plus three gives us 11, but eight dog three doesn't give us anything. So we need to have a final else statement. And this final else statement says, hey, if none of these other things are true, then we want to do this thing. And in that case, we want to put a string to the console that says something like invalid operator. So if none of these are true, then we can't do math to the numbers and we want to put to the console invalid operator. So let's give this a try. Control S to save. And let's go over to our GHCI here, clear it, reload, and let's run it. So enter first number, let's go with three. Enter an operator, let's do times. Enter second number, eight. So we should get 24, it should print out 24, right? And we get 24.0, and that's because we converted these two doubles. Okay, so that's good, let's try one more. Let's run it again, enter first number, five, enter an operator, minus, enter second number, four, we should get one, right? 1.0, right? Because we converted these to doubles. That's exactly what we want. Now let's suppose we do an enter an invalid operator. So two dog seven, and two dog seven's invalid, right? So it should return invalid operator. Perfect. So that's our completed calculator, but one thing we could do to improve this is break this up a little bit. Our main function is getting really long, so we could extract the logic that does the calculation and put it in its own function and then print the result in this main function. So let's do that. So up here we can say something like calculate, that'll be the name of our function, calculate. And we're gonna say it takes in right, because it's gonna do all this. So we need to take in the first number, the operator, and the second number into this function. So this function has three parameters. Um, so to kind of show that, we can say calculate first number is the first parameter, and then operator is the second, and second number would be the third parameter. And we're gonna set that equal to do, and that's gonna be this if then else logic. So let's take that logic out of main. And we're gonna paste it underneath this calculate function. Now, if you remember from before, our function needs a type signature, right? So let's call it calculate. And we need colon colon. And we need to specify our parameters first like we've done before. So first number, first number, it's coming in as a number, right? Because we converted it here. So first number will be a double. We converted it to a double here. Our operator is still a string. So we take in a string and then we have a third parameter this time. We haven't seen this before, but now we have. And our third parameter is gonna be the second number, which is still a double. So we take in a double, a string, and a double. and then we return something from the function. Right now, it looks like we're printing out the result, so which we could do. Um, so for example, we could say this is an IO, and we're going to print out the, the result of first number plus the second number, right? Um, so, or minus, or times, or divide. So we can say this, uh, control save. And down here in our main function, now we can just say, 
calculate, and we're going to pass calculate these three parameters. So we're going to pass it the first number, which is a double, the operator, and the second number. So here's the first one, here's the second parameter, and here's the third. Now if we save this, control S, it should do the same thing that our function was doing before, but we just separated this calculation logic into its own function. So over to WinGHCI, clear it, reload, and let's try it. Enter first number seven, enter an operator, plus second number four, and we get 11.0. Great, one more time. Let's do 12 dog three, and it says invalid operator.